You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 30th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have no deals with Russia, have never borrowed money from Russia, and have never had any contact with Russia, it's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. This week brought to you by our new presenting sponsor, Russia! Blatant, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's it, kind of that. It's reached reach that level of you know. I know my people are this stupid. Mm-hmm. I know they don't watch anything but Fox News. They don't listen to anything but hate radio. They might occasionally pick up a Wall Street Journal to you know wave in their friends' faces and say, "See, I'm not completely stupid." But he knows that his people are too dumb to know what the hell is really going on. So he can just say any old thing he wants. But it turns out there are actual consequences outside of the bubble for shit yeah. like this. Well, and and I think a lot of us knew when the Republican platform was changed just on Ukraine and nothing yeah. else, yeah. that something was up and that the Russian ambassador was hanging out with Trump people. Yes. Hey, and, hey my brothers, how are you doing today? That's very good. Yeah, Ukraine. <laughs> and it wasn't a NAFTA change where we just changed the font so no. that President Stupid could feel good about himself and sign what essentially already exists. It was an actual substantive change to the Republican platform. To soften our international treatment of Russia right. regarding Ukraine. That was the change. Right. And the, the media is to blame for this because oh, yeah. They, yeah. they covered it as how will this play. Yeah. And if everyone just denies it in a one-on-one exclusive interview with whoever, you know, and here's Manafort giving interviews and Kellyanne Conway's phone is texting everybody with an opportunity Uh to have someone from the campaign on. And she's very good at that. She's very good at scheduling exclusives with people and fed the beast. And that summer... We all remember what happened that summer. It was the summer of empty Trump podiums and yes. ratings. Yep. And so the media was getting exactly what they wanted. And they weren't going to they weren't going to turn down that money, that gravy train. You know, that was a gravy train for them. So there there's a lot of blame to go around for not noticing this when it happened. Well, I got to say there was a young firebrand blue gal who about 10 years ago saw this coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tried to steer his profession away from it. Uh, I'm quoting directly from him now. The journalistic ethics of old do not apply to the new guidelines over at the Associated Press. The new ethics are called accountability journalism. And the new bureau chief believes that the conventional press mode where both sides of an argument are entitled to equal weight is exactly what journalists need to avoid. Yes, both siders is shit. Who said that, Blue Gal, for 20 points? Ron Fournier. Ron fucking Fournier said this. Ron, both sides do it, Fournier. Ron, who paid for his fucking mortgage by sitting on a bench during the 2016 election and answering every single question with, well, you know both sides. You know the corrupt duopoly. You know both sides. That Ron Fournier. So you have to ask yourself, what took Ron Fournier from this bold stance in 2008, you know, when Barack Obama was president, uh, to this complete 180 degree opposite stance just a decade later when uh, Donald Trump was was running for president. And I think you have to answer the question by saying everyone thought Hillary would win. Yep. Everyone assumed yep. Hillary would win. So everybody went long on their post Hillary professional life. Right. All the right. journalists wanted to be seen as tough. And fair. You know, we held her to account and wanted to get right back to the business of letting Republicans screw Democrats by obstructing them and then asking why Democrats don't lead. That's the only thing they know how to do. That's the model. And everyone loaded up on that bridge until the bridge collapsed. And now they all would like to know whose fault it was. Well, well, and I'm I'm finding it really interesting to watch uh, House Republicans jostle for what position they're going to be on when they're in the minority (laughs) or not beyond or not beyond. Yeah, Yeah. because it's pretty clear to me that if there's any justice in this world, the House Ethics Committee 
will perhaps be the busiest committee yeah. of all. Yeah. Looking at leaks of intel and perhaps obstruction of justice. Yes, perhaps. Devin, Nune- yeah. Devin Nunez needs to have his phone cleaned with a very fine uh, little toothbrush. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, Jim Jordan as well. Both of them need to ha- have all their texts looked at, all their emails, every th- communication they had with Fox News off air. Uh, all that needs to be looked at. And, and, and here's so, the problem. Uh, Those guys are really stupid. Well, and they're they're showing their hand pretty clearly that the bets are now that Donald Trump isn't going to be around right. in 2020. Right. And, and they need to lash themselves to a different mast because. It, it, right. Exactly. And so so Jim Jordan, he's not going to be the, the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee. Which would mean Jim Jordan is the lead defense for Donald Trump yeah. in case of impeachment. Uh-huh. He's not going to be there. <laughs> they said, no, you're not going to. They The committee that decides where people are going to go said, uh, no, you don't get to do that. Well, you know, the, and, but uh, they can take some some consolation, some some uh, some comfort in the fact that Mark Meadows, Representative Mark Meadows of North Carolina, <laughs> leader of the House Freedom Caucus, the most ridiculously named caucus I think I've ever seen, has a super secret plan to fight Democrats and win the Mm -hmm. House back in 2020. So they're not just laying back on their laurels and and basking in the accomplishments of getting... Except that the whole memo has been leaked. Yeah, well, there's that thing where you you have a secret (laughs) plan and then somebody leaks it and then Bloomberg spreads it all over the place. Yeah. And the thing is, here's what I, I, I saw that was fascinating about this when I read it. They write... In uh, W-R-I-T-E, in, in complete denial when they even think they're talking among themselves. Oh, yeah. They don't yeah. They don't all sort of take off the cloak and laugh about how, yeah, we certainly screwed those people. We, the media has no idea what we're doing. They keep up the front even when it's just them talking among themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they all have this pious, pompous language, except – the way it's calibrated, you know exactly that they know exactly how corrupt they are. They know what hypocritical liars and hollow people they are. But um, uh, Mark Meadows' strategy is, and here's a direct quote, Americans want their Congress to get things done and focus on their agenda, not, now pay close attention, on endless, frivolous, and partisan investigations. Yes, America would never tolerate such things. Right. Um Right. The idea, and this is really their only playbook. It really is. Whatever the fuck we did during the Clinton administration, we're going to do the opposite during Bush. Whatever we did during Bush, we're going to flip it over for Obama. Whatever we did during Obama, uh, uh, Trump gets a free pass. Mm-hmm. And whatever we did during Trump, we're going to never, ever, ever uh, mention it again and hope that everyone goes along with it. Because they have their ample reason to believe, based on the last 25 years of history, that if they just flip over, and start talking about how Americans don't want frivolous partisan investigations. Right. No one will call them on their hypocrisy. No one will. Call, no one will call yeah. them on it. It was today. I think today I was having one of those one-sided Twitter conversations with Bill Crystal that I have sometimes. <laughs> and he was talking about history judging Paul Ryan really harshly. Oh yeah, yeah. Because, and my because pre- Bill Crystal got judged so harshly by his. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, there's there, that moment when. An unreconstructed Iraq war pimp starts wishing that history's harsh judgment be visited on on other people. And the reason he does that is he knows that there is a club, there is a cabal, there's a filthy conspiracy at the heart of our media to never hold people like Bill Crystal accountable for anything. I guess this is what what depresses me, though, Drift Glass. Yep. We see it coming? We see it coming, and I I don't know if we can stop it. I just don't know um, watching uh, Kid Rock on Fox and Friends this morning. <laughs> you know, Does he have his own cartoon, some live action cartoon on Fox know, and Friends? He was on, you know, because he did a concert and he had all these white, old, middle aged white women in the background, you know, who love Kid Rock. Uh, and, you know, I just wish we could uh, dial down all of the rhetoric. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, get along. And, you know, you ought to be able to have a beer with somebody. You know what I'm saying? And, and except, for, except for Joy Behar, that bitch. That bitch. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, I'm just kidding. And, of course, Fox and Friends had to apologize profusely for the swear. Yeah. <laughs> Not, Not the, the fact sentiment. that he's a total hypocrite. Right. Uh, but, no, but this is the thing. I I don't know 
if we all, you know, now we all just need to get along because the country's been through so much. And let's let's really try to work together as Americans now. Yeah. Whether that's well, just going to work. Here's where I, I take a little bit of comfort. I don't take a lot, but I do take a little. When it was the post-Bush administration, mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Pelosi was, Miss, let's not have impeachment. No impeachment. Yeah. Let's not impeach. Yeah. And Barack Obama wanted a purple America. You wanted to talk right. about purple America. He was the guy who invited uh, – he was invited up to George Will's townhouse, I think, or maybe Charles Krauthammer. And George Will was there. David Brooks was there. David Brooks got I don't know how many private interviews of Barack yeah. Obama over yeah. the years, like right. six, ten, something like that. Um, so you had a, a well-intentioned, oblivious Democratic president who um, really wanted all that Beltway bullshit to be true. And, well, and I um, think he wanted – uh, to change Washington into a sort of parliamentary system yeah. where the best ideas would float to the top. I would and like that too. Didn't realize that from day one, you know, they were out to get him. So I, I would like that to be true too. It would be great. Uh, the way you do that is by is by sawing off the Republican Party yes. and weld and welding into a drum and drowning in the ocean. <laughs> then you have the spectrum of opinion in this country goes from, as we've said before. Right. Uh, Bernie Sanders to Hillary Clinton exactly. or whatever, whoever you want. But and the Democrat Party believes that up is down and there is such a thing as gravity and climate change. Yeah. And and we yeah. and we listen to scientists. We argue about facts, <laughs> yes. efficacy and possibility. And we look at things, whether they work or they don't, and we right. fix them or cast them or, or, or and we double make it. mistakes. And, and that's right. going to happen. But you, right. you work on things based on data. Yes. So so here's why I take some small measure of comfort in that. Okay. Um, one of the very, very, very large liberal podcasts uh, that you're aware of um, that is mostly made up of uh, Barack Obama speechwriters. Mm -hmm. uh, they were doing their thing today. They had Marcy Wheeler on. So I, I can commend them to, oh, for that. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Um, sure. Marcy Wheeler was great. She's a good explainer. Uh, what's going on in Trump Russia right now is so complicated and so weird and has so many different angles. And she's just really good at this stuff and knows it, you know, the, on a molecular level. Right. So good. That was a good get. That was a really good job. What they admitted during the course of their podcast was it took us a long time to to and we had to learn the hard way during the Obama administration that Republicans do not respond to reason. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. only respond to brute political force. To power. Yeah. And that's it. And and I was like, you know what? I'm it, You're about. 15 years too late. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that we could have gotten done if you guys had bothered to listen to liberals mm -hmm. and had bothered to get this message earlier. But if you're really on board with that, if you really do accept that that's just true, that's just a fact like gravity. You can't reason with Republicans. You have to force them out of the way. You have to apply the kind of brutal political leverage to them that makes them go home and cry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once you've burned their party to the ground, maybe something beautiful and efficacious will spring up in its place. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But that's not going to happen. And they were they're very clear. The whole centrism thing, they're finally on board with the whole idea that centrism is a posture, not an ideology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, you know what? You guys didn't buy this shit when you were in power. Mm -hmm. Now you do. Now you've been out here in the wilderness with the rest of us pounding on the glass, demanding that they see reason and noticing that they just don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Republicans do not give a shit about this country, about this planet, about this timeline, about this universe. They do not give a shit. And I, I take a little comfort in the fact that we're never going to convince Midwestern economically distressed individuals that they were wrong to vote for Donald Trump. But there might be some hope that we start to convince some of our centrist liberal beltway friends that they made a huge mistake betting that the Republican Party could be trusted yep. and that they're not going to make that mistake again. Yeah. And if that's the case, then we have a much bigger crowbar than we had 10 years ago. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I, I, I take some hope also when I watch our kids. Yeah. And, and other young people and how yeah. they really see it in terms of racism, in mm -hmm. terms of needing government to work for them. Yep. And that it and and having a tremendous sense of fairness, which mo all every generation, the young people have this black and white sense of fairness, right? And and sometimes mm -hmm. that gets in the way, and sometimes it's absolutely essential. Uh, youngest child yesterday, I had the opportunity to take her around. Um, 
and she had a doctor's appointment and took her to that. And we had time in the car, which is always precious, precious time. She was upset about something that happened at school. And uh, she has, she's part of book club. And yesterday they got uh-huh. their pictures taken for the yearbook for book club. So th- things were tight. Uh, I had to pick her up late and, and we were late for her appointment. It was just, things were tight. But she was still wanted to talk about something that had happened at school. Her book club advisor is a young liberal uh, activist teacher who's there because she wants to make a difference in kids' lives. And she volunteers to do book club with mostly girls who have tremendously strong feelings about fairness and justice and wanting uh, equality and so forth. So that's teacher number one. Teacher number two, and I will just call her teacher Mm -hmm. number two, (laughs) made a comment to several people in earshot of youngest child about do-rags. And the fact that uh, students should not wear do-rags at school because they look a certain way. And used yes. a derog- they look used too a derogatory urban. term for that, right? Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Youngest child has more friends who are non-white than yeah. I have known in the past ten years, personally. Like yeah. that, I have actually yeah. one-on-one known. Uh, to this this semester, she has more non-white yeah. friends. These are. And these are sleepover, these are, eat over, go out of town with absolutely family friends. Absolutely close friends, right? Not just acquaintances First you say hi to in the hall. These are people right. that she is buying Christmas presents for, that she is uh, goes, you know, goes to events with, that hangs out after school. Goes on vacation goes with, on sometimes. vacation with them. Yes, yeah. These are close friends. So she was very upset about this injustice from teacher number two, and how yeah. dare this teacher say anything about how non-white people wear their hair. (laughs) It was really that simple. And she had an advocate with teacher Uh number one. Uh And it, it wasn't a knockdown drag out fight, you know, in the hallway between two education professionals, but clearly teacher number two had crossed a line and was made aware that she had crossed a line, whether I don't know how that's going to resolve itself, but youngest child felt supported within the school by teacher number one, that her, her sense of outrage over this was right, was heard (laughs) and Uh uh, was, was defended. So uh, that kind of understanding racial justice from the standpoint of one little comment, one, what you might call a microaggression, but you know, just uh-huh. that one little comment. And here is a 14-year-old girl who is white, who was raised by white parents, who gets it, who gets it right away. No, you don't talk about how black people wear their hair. There's certain things you just got to know yeah. better. Well, and I didn't mean to get off on that whole tangent, but no. I, getting back to hope <laughs> and yeah. loss of hope and, yeah. and back to hope, I'm, I'm very grateful that youngest child gets it. Um, somebody who doesn't get it is the New York Times. The New York Times <laughs> wrote a, wrote an article this week. Um, yeah. Watch out for the Freedom Caucus of the left. Yeah, boy, <laughs> look look out for them. They're they're brown and they're ladies and they're the scary. And, and, they're very and scary. They can just take over, you know, like the Freedom Caucus did. Yeah, like the Freedom Caucus you know? did. And and I I want to do a shout out to Paul Waldman at uh, the Washington Post who wrote in Plumb uh-huh. Line and said, uh, nobody has to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. These new progressive members of Congress did not come to Washington to burn it down. They're here to govern. They understand they have an agenda. That's for sure. Yeah. They absolutely have an agenda. And it might stir things up a little bit. And that's okay. Yeah. They have an agenda. They want to do things. Well, they, you wouldn't want them to not do things when they get here. All of a sudden, people in Washington are shocked that, new members want to change things. <laughs> That's not shocking. That is what every new member wants. They come in with ambitions. Yeah. Uh, but yep. they don't want to burn down the government. The real danger is the problem solver caucus and the no labels people. <laughs> Can't we just have a nice, sensuous <laughs> conversation about cutting yeah. entitlements and right. tax cuts? And, no, we can't. No, because you know what, fucker? You're the problem. You are the problem. 
The centrist assholes are the problem. That's the thing we can control. We can't control Fox News. We can't control hate radio. Republicans are just brain dead. But we can definitely make life so unpleasant for the both siders and the no labelists and the problem solvers and the whatever the fuck else that they have to either shit or get out of the yeah. middle. And that's 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 what I'm dedicating. That's what I've dedicated my blog to. It turned out for about 13 years now. Is that's the target. That's the pe- those are the people who enable mm-hmm. the bad guys. And they need to go. They need to. They need to be made. And I again, I'm very encouraged by the fact that um, Paul Krugman now writes columns about this. Uh, Michelle Goldberg, speaking of the uh, New York Times, and and in a good way, is marvelous. And she has a column uh, this week entitled "Maybe They're Just Bad People." Yes, right, right. <laughs> it's like maybe it, the people who are doing this shit are just bad people, and that that's is not... a really good article, by the way. It yeah. talks about again what you were saying that there are there is a certain brand of conservative out there who does not care about anything but power. No, and getting power is the is their motive, and all of their behavior is connected to getting power, and that that does yeah. mean. You know, they're Machia- Machiavellian in a very bad way, that they are yes. they are bad people. Yes, it's 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 helpful to hear because she's you you might think if you heard sort of the overview of her article, and I'll just tell people to go read it, but you heard the overview of your article, you'd think that perhaps she was slut shaming. Yeah, no. But what comes out is that it's not about sexuality it's about not caring (laughs) not caring where you are or what you do as long as it gets you ahead that's what this is about yes and uh sleeping with somebody or having sex with somebody is part of it yeah but that it that is not the crime here (laughs) no and and sleeping with somebody and drinking with them and and uh doing whatever they want you to do to get ahead when they believe the exact opposite of what you believe on every single mm-hmm. fucking important issue, the issue that should be important to you. But actual policy ideas, actual beliefs are completely irrelevant to you. Right. Getting ahead, getting new shoes, getting to look good, getting to the right parties is literally all you care about. And you will go face down, ass up if that's what's necessary to get you ahead. I mean that quite literally. Right. And, right. and when they write about it, it's this – delightful lack of conscience they have no idea how horrible they sound when they write about it oh yeah yeah well we won't get it we'll let no. people go and read michelle goldberg's we'll link it in our in our post but yeah, one yeah, thing we do want to remind not- people of because there's a deadline coming up is speaking of government programs speaking of hope and caring about what does and doesn't make your mom happy you'd make your mom real happy if you signed up for obamacare yeah Uh, The deadline for that is December 15th. It's coming up fast. Uh, Enrollments are down this year because uh, the people in the White House and the people uh, who are running the government have decided that they're not going to do any marketing, any mentions, any calls, any reminders. They don't want this thing to succeed. They want it to fail. Um, And we're not going to let that happen. So don't forget to sign up. If you haven't already, sign up for the Affordable Care Act. Deadline's December 15th. And it's still out there. It's not gone. Thank God. Uh, but it's uh, it's something you kind of have to look for now. The, the the website's the same, but you're not going to be reminded through your phone and through your television to do it. Not not by the Trump administration. You'll no, be reminded by, by a lot favorite. of other advocates, but yeah, by the mostly Trump. liberal podcasts. So yeah. right. Well, <laughs> and uh, looking at the post midterm election map of states that have not expanded Obamacare and seeing yeah. that big blob of the Confederacy still there, it's the slave it's infuriating. States. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, we need well, to we need to get to Trump news and Cohen news. Okay, I just um, want to tell everyone we did make it home through Snowpocalypse, Bruce. Oh my Bruce. gosh, it was hard. It was, and we made a lot of jokes. We we're going twenty miles an hour for what, maybe two and a half hours. Yeah, to go ninety a miles. A little bit longer than that, actually. Yeah. yeah, but and you know, fifty feet visibility. There were I don't I lost count of how many spinouts we we uh, saw was, on the way. It was ten or it 12 was really bad. Outs. It was yeah. really really bad. Really, really you know bad. that scene mm-hmm. in the Martian. Where the storm kicks up, <laughs> that's yes, a lot it how it looked. It really was like that. And Drift Glass did all the driving, and I sat there and talked to him while we and and prayed while we were getting through. You know what the important lesson is that I required reminding: slow down and focus. Slow down and focus is a good lesson all the time. Yes, indeed. Yep. And uh, 
I'm sick of Donald Trump. I'm sure a lot yeah. of other people are too. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm sick of waiting to see justice, and I'm sick of daily trying to figure out, you know, how to avoid his tweets and avoid him being president of the United States. Uh, it's but, hard given your day job. So uh, it is my day job too. Uh, yeah. But uh, there were there was progress this week in terms of justice. Uh -huh. uh, Michael Cohen is cooperating. And uh, apparently there now is a, quite a revelation regarding Russia uh -huh. that uh, during the election time, as we as we <laughs> Occam's razor has gotten really, really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> no. How How is this possible? The easiest, the most simple explanation is that Donald Trump wanted to make money off of Russia. And yeah. that's exactly what it appears happened. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump wanted to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. He was willing to give a $50 million condo to Putin uh, to get that. He was working on it. And again, it, it goes back to that assumption that he was going to lose, right? right. He was going to exactly. lose the election. Exactly. That was the plan. So all of this uh, finagling to get him to, to, you could do both. As he said on the White House lawn this week, I can run a business and run for president. Cause I, and he, what he didn't say was, because I wasn't going to win. And right. it was all going to be more money for me and more branding for me. This was all a branding exercise for Trump and a grifting exercise. And, and then a he, martyrdom then, exercise yeah, where he was going to lose and spend the next 20 years or however long he lives screaming about Hillary Clinton stole the election, right. rigged, election rigged election, and have his own show on Fox, his own wing of the Fox network. Right, right. Yeah. And none of that happened. And no. uh, so, and all of that, all of the suffering that we've been going through for the past two years has actually been justice inflicted on Trump. Be and that's yeah. thinking of it that way is helpful, but uh, it still hurts. Uh, yeah. What's happening to our country hurts. And I am not cheering with each step no. toward no. getting rid of this guy because this is happening to our country. Um, so I'm pretty somber about it. But yeah. uh, when there is a revelation and, and, we get closer to removing this from our country. Uh, that is a good day. Well, and this is to understand this at the macro level. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is the week that stupid Watergate also became stupid Godfather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Or as it's more commonly known, Godfather Part Three. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is really stupid Godfather. Yeah, yeah. and it because it, now it's all about my lawyer's weak. He's a liar. He's a rat. You know, it's all the the inner fake tough guy trump is now just puking out all over everything now that he's caught mm -hmm. now that it looks like it's all going to come pouring out that his kids were involved that his lawyer taped him that the shitty lawyer that hired him rudy giuliani doesn't know which lie to tell on which day um they're just stumbling all over each other trying to figure out how the hell to get out of this thing that they were never supposed to be in in the first place right. this was this is this is this was never supposed to happen um and now that they're there they don't know what to do because they have said on tape that we have business in Russia. We have stuff going on in Russia. Um, uh, the, the kids have said, you know, we, we get a lot of money from Russia. All of this is on the record. And then you have Trump saying, I have no business in Russia. I have nothing to do with Russia. Russia's I never even heard of Russia. And then, well, maybe I did. But and it's all like, Jesus, this is the dumbest episode of homicide I've ever seen right. because it's just a dumb criminal shitting himself in the box before the interrogation has even begun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and not knowing how to get out. Well, and, and not knowing how he got here, how he got this far so far and thinking right. it's, it's because I'm brilliant every day that he gets away with it is because he's brilliant. And so he thinks, of course, I'm going to get away with it. And all I have to do is shake my finger and say no collusion and I'll get away with it. And I, I don't know how this is going to turn out in terms of how long can Fox News keep up the the dream that people that 30 percent of this country has, that there is no collusion, that there's nothing going on here. At what point does the switch? Is there a switch? No, nope. I, I don't know what. And, nope. and I guess the switch that has to be thrown has to happen in the Republican Senate. Either we have well, to flip the Senate to the Democratic side. And flip, and at that point, we flipped the White House in 2020 as well. Well, you know what the – I mean, you and I know what the playbook is for the next two years for Republicans. It's the Democratic Congress and Nancy Pelosi trying – you know, destroying the country, standing in the way of all the wonderful things Republicans want to do, and 
leaning really hard on their contacts on whatever extortion they have uh, uh, over the mainstream media that lets them continue to be trotted out every Sunday without any questions asked. Yeah. Um, You know, on the one hand, you have climate change might be happening. On the other hand, you have Rick Santorum saying, I'm not a scientist. I'm just an asshole, but maybe it's not. And you're going to see the same because the mainstream press only wants one thing. That's to go back to the good old days Mm -hmm. when they could sit and be lazy as fuck. And Ron Fournier could sit on his stool and say both sides, both sides, both sides and get paid for it. That's all they want. And they haven't been able to do that for two years because it's clearly not both sides. One side side is a diseased fascistic shit pile and the other is not. So they need some straw man or preferably straw woman, preferably straw woman of color Mm -hmm. on the left that they can then counterpose to everything on the right and say, well, who could they get to do that? Yeah. Who could they yeah. hold up as but young, that's the playbook. young, not white, dynamic, mm-hmm. uh, unapologetically socialist? Uh, yep. Yeah, they AOC, they found her. Mm-hmm. Alexandria Cortez, they found her. So, yeah, be and, careful what you wish for, Chuck Todd, because yeah, <laughs> we're coming for you. Um, I should mention that two million federal workers received a memo warning that they can't use the word resist. Or discuss uh, discuss Trump impeachment at work anymore. Okay, but at the same time, mm-hmm. eight Trump administration officials were censured today for using "Make America Great Again" in a tweet. Oh. And so there is there is, you know, a balance in terms of trying to enforce those laws. Two different people are trying to enforce a different side of that law. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the Trump administration tried to get everybody to shut up about the resistance in the government by enforcing the Hatch Act. No one is enforcing the Hatch Act when it comes to uh, Kellyanne Conway, apparently. No, uh, no. But uh, yeah. Or Matt Whitaker for Matt that Matt Whitaker. But people who yeah. who uh, are in the Trump administration who tweeted, Get, make America great again, uh, were censured uh, today. And that is Good for through that. the work of crew and uh, other people suing them. So when you see both sides of the battlefield, it's a lot more encouraging. Like, for example, you could see... Ted Cruz wanting to get backstage passes to Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> but, but when you add in the Trent Reznor who told him to go fuck himself, yeah. that makes that a happy story, <laughs> a wonderful story, a, a true story of, no, I have the power here, motherfucker, and you have to go away. Yeah. You're awful. You're a slime trail. Leave me the hell alone. Yeah. That's just, that's what makes me like, oh, okay, we, they're good guys on our side. We, they're not on camera nearly enough. Um, it's much more... Sneaky. I want to mention one thing about Brett Stevens, Mm -hmm. who just who works for the New York Times for again no explicable reason, keeps finding new ways to embarrass himself. Um, He's the one who who sort of looked down his nose at the blue wave before the votes were even counted. um, Talked about how twenty eight seats this and that, and it turns out, of course, he first of all he turned in the story way too early. He turned in the story riding the tide of Beltway, lowering expectations about how Democrats were going to get maybe not even win, maybe not even have enough. And, of course, he was wrong. So what he's been doing is slipping in modifications to his story uh, that everyone's been catching. And it's just hilarious. Drift Glass, you know a lot more, given your Chicago history, about Alderman Eddie Burke than a lot of people do. Certainly more than I do. He's a Chicago alderman whose office windows were taped with brown paper by the federal government. Yeah, just maybe Deutsche Bank was raided. Alderman Eddie Burke, uh, who's one of the few surviving, uh, maybe the only surviving member of the Eddie Verdoliak um, days when the, uh, the all the bigots on the city council at the city of Chicago broke. They're all Democrats, but uh, more than half of them broke away to oppose Harold Washington because he was black. Um, and Eddie Verdoliak and Eddie Burke were the leaders of that racist um, revolution, re- racist rebellion. And but being an, an alderman in Chicago is a very powerful position. Well, and he has been an alderman literally since 1969. Yeah. He has been an alderman in Chicago for 50 years. Yeah, it, it's one of these days we're all going to have a meetup, and I'm going to talk about Chicago politics, and <laughs> it's going to be fun. really educational because it is a microcosm of the country, and it's one of those things that that Barack Obama would have done well to learn from, so he would have been spared the. Um, painful education when he discovered in Washington that Republicans cannot be reasoned with. Mm-hmm. Um, Harold Washington learned that lesson as well. Uh, he broke the council. He won re-election and then unfortunately he passed away from a heart attack. 
But Eddie Burke's been there a million zillion years, and in a, and like most aldermen, he has like five businesses on the side. That's how he you know gets rich. Mm-hmm. But one of those is being a tax attorney, and his one of his big clients was a guy named Donald John Trump, I believe. Right. Uh, for about twelve years. So when you add up Trump and taxes and indictments and Russia. And Deutsche and Bank. Federal raids. <laughs> and federal raids. I mean, usually they only paper up the window when they're getting, selecting a new pope. But no. <laughs> no. Uh, in this case, this was not intentional. And of course, a shout out to Carol Marine, one of my absolute favorite Chicago journalists uh, who, who just loves politics so much. It's it's hilarious. She just get, she gets all wound up on election night just talking about every little thing. And I, I find that adorable. And she was one of the first people who said, hey, there's something going on inside Ed Burke's office. wonder what's happening there. And from then on, it was it was a rolling story. No one's quite sure exactly what happened because his you know he's been on the wrong side of the law before and has survived. But the 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 number of coincidences all happening on one day, you know what Ian Fleming said about that. You know, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. Right. So right, right. that much right. shit happening on the same day is kind of hilarious and uh, and should scare the living daylights out of donald trump we had it we had a uh shocking climate change report come out this week we uh-huh. uh as i said on the twitter let's stop framing things the way the Koch brothers want them framed about yes. oh it's going to be so hard and people are unwilling to change and blah 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 and focus on as i've always said clean air mm-hmm. clean water sane land management and safe food yeah you, you work on those four things, you make little victories in regulating what needs to be regulated to get there. And you, I'm not promising you'll fix climate change, but you'll make it better. And you are also, and this is, as I've said before, the one time in, in my memory that Donald Trump was right, that when he said in a moment of lucidity, <laughs> <laughs> the climate change issue is a marketing problem. That people are afraid because it's so big and they don't know what to do and they don't think they can do anything about it. Make it about clean air and dare Koch brothers, dark money funded pundits to argue against clean air. Well, and the global fascism was so big and so terrifying. America couldn't do a thing about it. Right. And then we did. And then we so, did. Yeah. Uh, we can do that. Our, our, these are our parents and grandparents have tackled problems that were as daunting to them, that apparently as insoluble to them as this is to us. We mm-hmm. can fix this. Yeah. We just have to be determined to fix it and not take no for an answer. Right. We put a person on the moon. We did in we did. less than a decade. Because swear to God, to swear it. to God, it happened. I was there. All right, let's do a little news roundup. All right. Uh, who's next, Don Jr. or Jared? Uh, my money's on Don Jr. I think everybody's yeah. money's on Don Jr. Uh, Paul Ryan said. Bye bye to the House Bye-bye. of Representatives, and he really misses the good old days when he was in the minority and could pretend he was a numbers guy. Yeah, he literally said that the best times he had was when they were in the minority. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the only time that he actually got the, the bullshit at max, at full max, right? Yeah, well, and there was nobody holding him accountable. There was nobody right. making right. his math work. It, right. it was right. he could sit there with with uh, Charlie Sykes up in Wisconsin and just shoot the shit and, and pretend to be a smart guy and pretend to know what he's talking about. And everybody but Paul Krugman would say, man, this is a smart guy. This is a really smart guy. He knows, he knows he arithmetic. Knows numbers. He's a numbers guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. John Boehner, <laughs> the previous Republican speaker, will go down as a weepy fool who knew when to bail out and join the cannabis lobby. Yeah. But Paul Ryan will go down as the biggest fraud and failure ever to hold the speakership. I yes, think that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Paul Krugman wrote... You can't restore manufacturing by screaming you're fired, which I think sums up pretty well uh, what Trump's policy is towards everything. Just yelling at it until it stops, which mm-hmm. doesn't actually work. And he gave he gave business advice to the president of GM this week, who's yeah. uh, announced massive layoffs. Uh, maybe you should just build cars that people want to buy. <laughs> yeah. And the president yeah. of GM said, yeah, I never thought about that. What we what we decided to do is to take our giant tax cut and use the incentives that you put in the bill, Mr. President, yes. Yes, to move jobs overseas. Yes, they did. <sighs> well, and the, I mean, there's there's pressure counter pressure. The the tax incentives that you put in there make it pro- profitable for us to leave. Mm-hmm. By the way, your tariffs fucked us out of a billion dollars. Right. 
So, okay, you're telling us in very clear language that to stay here, it's incredibly onerous and expensive. And to leave, you're going to pay us to do to leave. Right. So right. what are we to make of that? And the real challenge is making the economically anxious white working class in the Midwest who are not very bright understand that in clear, simple monosyllabic language. Sherrod Brown because is good at that, Driftglass. He really Sherrod is. Sherrod Brown he is really, good at really that. is. Yep. 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 I know. I don't think his wife wants him to run. And if she doesn't no. want him to run, he shouldn't run. That's how I feel. Right. Sorry. Right. But he should be Secretary of Labor. He should be Secretary of Labor if yeah. if uh he doesn't want to stay in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Trump on uh Michael Cohen. Uh, he's a weak person. He's weak and not very smart. I hired him because he did me a favor once. That's what, do me a favor once. It was Barzini all along. Drift it was. It really I, was. I didn't know until this moment. <laughs> it was Barzini all along. That was such a uh, mob statement, that whole thing. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's, you know, getting fake tough guy. Uh, emails show that Facebook's Sheryl Sandberg, you know, the perfect face for that company because mm-hmm. she's every she checks every one of Mika Brzezinski's boxes. Exactly. Uh, was involved in opposition research on, wait for it, George Soros despite earlier denying any involvement. Well, way to go. I wonder what's going to happen to her. I guess Nothing. it did cross my desk. Yeah. She said it crossed her desk. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Fox News coordinated its interview questions before on-air interviews with Scott Pruitt. Not shocking. Yeah. Uh, in one case, the EPA approved part of the show's script. Again, not shocking. Uh, we're going to find a lot more of that if we start subpoenaing Oh, yeah. Uh, Devin Nunez's text messages. Yeah. I kind of thought that's how Chuck Todd did everything. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> I, considering how, how hands off he is and how, how prepared and how ritualized everything is on those shows, I just assumed they negotiated the terms of, of every interview, yeah. uh, except for, for when Carter Page comes in and just loses it on the air, which is always hilarious. Uh, yeah. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, the outgoing chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, said it's, quote, awfully tough for Ivanka Trump to comply with government email email rules. Yeah, it's very tough for her to do that. It's really kind of unfair to expect her, mm-hmm. a busy woman with a big schedule and an active social life, to obey the rules that her daddy wanted to lock up Hillary Clinton under. Just terribly, terribly up. unfair. So lock unfair. Lock her up and see if she can obey the rules then. Yeah. yeah. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke is a pig, but you already knew that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hours after... Representative Roll Gravalia penned an op-ed calling for Ryan Zinke's resignation. The Interior Secretary hit back, calling the Democrat a drunk who stole taxpayer money to hide his behavior. It's hard for him to think straight from the bottom of the bottle, said Ryan Zinke. Yeah. Uh, today, Without evidence, I assume? I, I don't. Well, I, I think it might be uh, the case that uh, the representative has a, a known problem that I believe he might be addressing. Uh, but you know it's 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 pretty vicious and shitty thing to do. I mean, yeah. it tells you this asshole's backed into a corner. Right. Um, the White House is preventing the CIA director from talking to the Senate on the burner of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, yesterday, oh, today at the G20 meeting, um, the two most murderous tyrants in the world, uh, the most famously murderous tyrants in the world, literally high fived each other. Which I think was uh, like they were old frat brothers, and I don't mean I mean they 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 greeted each other, they cheered, they clasped hands above and smiled and patted each other on, on the back, and I thought that was just, and it was like oh the two people who own Donald Trump's soul, yes, uh, right. you know the the co owners of the timeshare um, met and and slapped each other on the back for being such competent um, despots, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Jared Kushner directed the Department of Defense and state to inflate the value of the arms deal between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia from around $14.5 billion to $110 billion. I assume by Christmas it'll be a trillion dollars, yeah. I'm guessing, yeah. roughly a trillion dollars, and it will have created over 400 million jobs. So, you know, that's great. Yeah. I guess that's good for everyone. Uh, background on the Raul Gravalia uh, story. He is a recovering uh-huh. alcoholic. Yeah. Well, and, there you uh, go. Good for him. Uh, as someone tweeted, uh, having to contend with Ryan Zinke would drive me to drink. So glad that you yeah. are getting, you are in recovery. Uh, also, uh, he was reelected in Arizona. Oh, three with 61.4% of the vote. 
And oh. Ryan Zinke does not enjoy nearly that level of support around the country. <laughs> Anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Anywhere. yeah, we're good. <laughs> uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs told congressional staffers that it will not reimburse veterans who are paid less than they were owed as a result of delayed or deferred GI Bill payments. VA officials promised the opposite earlier this mm-hmm. month. So more promises broken by the Trump administration to veterans. to veterans. He doesn't just not go to funerals and not go to cemeteries and refuse to treat um, the military with the respect it deserves instead of treating them like props. He actively screws them over and expects them to be grateful for it. More than four in 10 companies plan to raise prices to offset the higher cost of production due to Trump's trade war. About one in 10 companies told pollsters the tariffs would encourage them to move jobs offshore. Uh, Midwest farmers are still getting cream thanks to Donald Trump's tariffs. So way to go, Donald. Senate Republicans blocked a vote on a bill to protect Robert Mueller. Mike Lee of Utah was the senator that blocked the Protect Mueller bill. And Orrin Hatch, outgoing senator from Utah, was the one who said, we don't think we should have a Protect Mueller bill because that's just going to make Trump mad. Trump again dismissed his own government's report on the devastating impacts of climate change. The Trump administration has also decided that adults working with kids at the migrant detention camps don't need to pass an FBI fingerprint or background check. Fucking tired of these people having any control over anything in anyone's life. And if you want to say, well, you know, can we just dial down the rhetoric? And no, nope. we can't. We fucking can't. No. 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 You know what worked this time? Dialing up, Dialing the up the rhetoric and telling you you're wrong and you're out of office. That's it. That's the only thing. Now, here's some good news. Yes. Here's, here's some, some good, good news. news. Contra- contributions to the NRA dropped by $55 million in 2017. They are poor now. Oh. Womp, womp, now, as soon womp, as there's womp. a Democratic president in office, they'll send out a mailing that they're coming to get your guns and those yeah. money will go back up again. And Donald Trump once again threatened that he would be totally willing, totally be willing to shut down the government if he doesn't get his fucking wall. Well, guess Mexico's what? You're not going to get your wall. fucking wall. Mexico's going to pay yeah. for it. That's all you got to say. Every time Crazy Uncle Liberty brings this up, just say Mexico's going to pay for the wall. How is how how are they going to do that? Are they going to pay in pesos? Is there a payment plan? Are they going to have a coupon book? How are they going to do that, Crazy Uncle Liberty? And he'll just shut up and go away. And that's really all you can hope for these people. Shut up and go away. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Sparky, and you will notice that Sparky has a rubber band, and he calls it My Precious. My Precious. So go visit, <laughs> go visit Sparky at our Facebook page and website. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, prolappodcast at gmail.com, where you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Now, I have a a very funny story to tell about the gourmet coffee guideline, Drift Glass. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's funny. We have a a new opportunity for people who have not donated before and would like to buy us a cup of coffee uh, to donate to us. Uh, There is a website called Buy Me a Coffee. Literally, it's called Buy Me a Coffee. And uh, yeah, there is a link in ways to support the show on our website, proleftpot.com, where you can click on the button and buy us a coffee. For five bucks, you can buy us a coffee. Um, <laughs> we uh, launched this earlier this week, and everyone thought it was a joke. Literally, we had like 95 visits to our Buy Me a Coffee page <laughs> and zero <laughs> donations. So it was right. the most self-owned moment of the Professional yeah. Podcast. Because we've had fake advertisers and always talked about the gourmet coffee guideline. And all of a sudden, somebody comes up with the idea of buy creators a coffee. We we take them up on that opportunity and it falls flat on its face. So I am terrified they're going to open uh, a branch of uh, where the good Lord split you. Or just <laughs> farewell party supply somewhere with a fundraising opportunity. We're going to be sitting there going... Okay, it's not a joke anymore. You yeah. really can't well, send us when, when they start doing them. hello fascist food boxes. That's when yeah. we really need to worry. But no, I think we'll sue at that point. Yeah. Buy me a coffee is actually helping creators do is. things it and is. get money for their work, and I appreciate that. And we would be happy to take advantage of that. Um, the one advantage I will note to buy me a coffee if you want to donate five bucks, either by the month or just by one time. There are some people who don't want to do business with PayPal for whatever reason. Uh, Buy Me a Coffee does not use PayPal. They use another service. And you can go and find details on their website about how they how they do things. 
Um, so if that's one of your objections to donating, check out buymeacoffee.com. Uh, there is a link at our website, proleftpod.com, and uh, we'll be happy to take your donation there. So don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Uh, we are going to also be um, doing a new GoFundMe just for the next three weeks. Uh, I'll mention more about that next week, but it is to help me pay off my medical bills. So I'll be talking about that next week. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, proleftpod.com for details, both our PayPal, postal address, Patreon, GoFundMe, and buy me a coffee <laughs> are all there <laughs> at proleftpod.com. <laughs> Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. It always tickles me to see people sharing our show. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are both very legal and very cool. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, and the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.